So in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix bad AI posts and make them rank on Google's first page and also get discovered by AI search engines. So by the end of this video, you will be able to know what exactly is a bad AI post, what a good SEO post looks like, should you do some minor fixes or a full rewrite, how to fix a bad AI blog post that is already getting some SEO traffic but not ranking on the first page of Google, how to use perplexity AI and Claw to create better drafts for topics that need a full rewrite, how to make AI drafts some more like a human. And lastly, the most important part, how to add these human elements that AI can't do right now to make your blog post more valuable and to rank in Google. But first, let's get some of the objections out of the way. So you might be thinking that AI content is always bad, but actually it's a really good starting point because you can use AI to do really good research that can be the basis for your blog post draft. And then it saves you so much time instead of working with a blank page. Also, some people think that AI content as is will rank in Google. This rarely happens. Most sites who started using AI content at scale have seen massive ranking drops. So Google finally figured out how to devalue these sites. And it's not just about some specific signs of AI usage. It's more about the value of the content, which is usually really superficial. Also, sometimes it seems that fixing bad AI content takes more time than writing something yourself. And that actually is true. You want to start out with a really good draft that you have to do minimal edits on. And if you can't tell the difference between bad and good AI content, then don't worry. I'm going to help you. And you don't have to be a good writer or SEO expert for this. So let's jump in. So what is a bad AI post? So usually if you are using AI a lot, you can tell right away. Something feels off. You get bored right away. You don't want to read it. The structure is really boring. It's using a bit complicated language. And even though there's a lot of text, it's mostly fluff and there's no real value for you. Also, the titles often look the same and there are no links or only internal links there. And another sign of bad AI posts is also using AI images, which lose trust right away, or there are no images at all, which makes the content really low value overall. And often there's also no author. So these are the main signs you can track right away. But I also have figured out a prompt that you can use. So if you're not sure if the post that you're working on, maybe you got it from a writer, maybe it's already published in your blog and it's not ranking, and you want to know if it's actually AI written or does it have any SEO value, then I have this prompt that you can also use. You can just go to Claude AI and here you paste the prompt. It's asking, is this post written by AI? Evaluate it in terms of telltale signs of AI writing and also if the content of the post satisfies the search intent of someone Googling for this topic. Take into account the most probable target group and their expertise level. So if the target group for this topic is more senior, we shouldn't cover basic concepts or definitions in the article, but instead meet them at their level. Are all the questions fully and trustworthily answered within this article? Is it using contextually relevant external links to sources that add value to the reader? Create a report on your opinion and offer suggestions on how to rewrite the article so it would satisfy the search intent of the reader in the most comprehensive way without adding fluff and without being detectable as AI writing. Start the report with a score of confidence in how much it's written by AI. 100% is the max. Also add a similar score for the search intent satisfaction and content depth for the ideal target group. But use words instead of the percentage, like good, bad, and so on. Also add a short decision on if it's easier to rewrite the whole post or to make minor fixes. Be very strict and critical with your evaluation. The article is here. So here we just paste the article that we want to evaluate. And it's better to paste the whole text and not just the link, especially in Claude, which doesn't have internet access. So I have this site where I experimented with early AI articles. So it's definitely written by AI. I didn't put any effort into it. It's just like using the auto blogging tools. And I'm going to get this article. I'm going to paste it with my prompt to Claude, and I'm asking it to evaluate if it's AI written and also if it satisfies the search intent for SEO value and overall, like, how's the content depth? So I got this report, AI writing confidence 85%. And it's also giving me all the signs that it is AI writing. Also, search intent satisfaction level is poor. I'm not surprised. And it's also recommending me to completely rewrite the article. So this is what a bad AI content looks like. It's using AI image. The title is always similar. It's using this weird colon here almost every time. There is an author, but it's not really clear who this is. Of course, it's me. And there is a lot of fluff. There are some percentages here, but no sources. So it doesn't really seem trustworthy. So 
we need to do a full rewrite. But first, let's go over why is AI content that bad? So the same site that I showed you, you can see here in my Google Search Console data that it got some impressions at first because there are so many articles, so many keywords that are mentioned, but overall it doesn't generate any meaningful traffic. Over the last 16 months, it only got like 46 clicks and I'm pretty sure these people will never come back to my site. So don't do automatic blogging with AI. It doesn't work. And also if you have a really trustworthy brand connected to it, the brand will also suffer. And most importantly, it's just wasting your time and money. So that's why you need to add value with your content. Even if you are using AI, do it in a smart way. So a good rule of thumb is if the article that you're trying to fix is already gathering some data and you can check it in Google Search Console, then it makes more sense to fix it. Uh, definitely leave that URL the same, but you can change almost anything inside the article. If it is already getting some organic traction, it means that it has some value for the reader. So now it's more about adding more value to it and not doing a full rewrite. But in majority of the cases, if you have some AI content and the problem is that it's not ranking, then you almost always need to do a full rewrite. As I said before, it's easier to do a full rewrite than to start fixing it step by step if, if the whole draft is really bad. And first, I'm going to show you quickly how you can do minor fixes for an article that is already somewhat ranking in Google, getting you some SEO traffic. And also if you use the previous prompt with AI and the AI report is also telling you, you only need to do some minor edits, then this is the prompt to use. Now you want to ask AI to give you a practical to-do list and all the recommendations for these fixes. Like what should I fix to match the search intent better, to satisfy the search intent better and how to add value and depth to the content. And then the second part of the prompt is asking it to rewrite my blog post and make all the suggested fixes that are related to the text itself, while adding placeholders for suggested images, sections that need original research, or showcase studies, examples, or sources. Don't make up any examples, personal stories, or facts. So this last sentence is really important. So basically you are asking AI to do all of the fixes it can do reasonably and add placeholders for everything that needs additional work from a human like yourself. And then you go through this list one by one and you create the best possible content that there is. At this point, you are adding a lot of human hours or minutes into it. And this part isn't supposed to be easy. So you, you maybe need to find actual case studies from your users. You might need to figure out examples from your product. You might have to create new graphs, infographics, gather new data, do a survey, find a quote from your CEO, or do a bunch of screenshots small video tutorials, whatever is needed to satisfy the search intent of that post and topic. But as I said, with majority of the cases, with bad AI content, it doesn't rank, it doesn't add value, so you can just do a full rewrite. So you take the same topic and the first task is to create the best possible first draft for it. And then with that first draft, you will start to add those human elements, that human work into it later. So the first step of creating a really good first draft is to do really good research. So go to Perplexity AI and use this prompt. So the prompt is research topics based on this input and output the list of strong facts, data, statistics, and insights from Reddit users that will complement the blog post written about this topic in the next step. Output 10 to 20 facts with sources, no text before or after. Output everything like this, and then I'm giving it the structure, how I need the output to look like. And then I'm adding a topic. Uh, in this case, it's AI marketing hype. Target group is CMOs of tech companies, pain points, AI hype is overwhelming, but you should be using it more. Jobs to be done, the strategy creation that drives revenue implementation. So these parts you have to fill based on your own topic and your target group. And then it lets use perplexity to find these facts and do all of this research for me. And I really like that I can use actual Reddit threads to gather information along with all of the other sources. And here are the sources. And it's almost entirely Reddit based. So I'm going to prompt it once more to add some academic sources or web-based sources as well. So I'm adding a prompt of find some non-Reddit sources too. Okay, and then now I have 20 different st statistics, different sources, also 20 
different viewpoints from Reddit, all relevant to my topic. And the next step is to go to Claude AI and to use this prompt. And the prompt says output a full blog post combining these inputs and adding contextually relevant sources with in-text links with contextually relevant anchor text and make these hyperlinks. Never use titles, subtitles that have this colon symbol in it. All titles and headings must be just one sentence and it must be about the biggest takeaway in the chapter that follows. The topic, again, I'm adding my inputs, target group, pain points, jobs to be done. And then I'm also adding the researched sources from the last step here. So. I just have to go back to Perplexity AI and I have to copy and paste all of the Reddit sources. For and let's go back to Claude and add them here. And then the regular web sources as well. Let's copy all of this and go back to Claude and paste these here as well. And now Claude is creating that first draft for our content. I can already see that the title is not as I like, but this is a small fix. But the text is already looking pretty good. Lots of sources being linked to, lots of statistics. Okay, and the article is done now. And now I want to go back and reuse the prompt that I started with, which asks it if this is an AI written text, how well it satisfies the search intent and so on. So now I added this prompt to Claude as well, and let's see what the result is. And of course it says it's AI written, of course it is. But now what I like about this is it goes into the search intent analysis and it really thinking about like what needs to be in this content. And now it's rewriting the whole text based on the search intent satisfaction and also the content depth and meeting the target group at their level. And now something that I do see, it mentions a lot of statistics, but it's not using the in-text links as much anymore. So I'm going to re-prompt it and say like what happened. And my prompt is just saying every statistic and fact must be correctly linked in text. And now it's making all the fixes, but in this same chat, since I added all those Reddit sources, all those general sources, with statistics and all those general web sources, it's now taking that information and making the fixes. And now the last thing to do is we want this whole post to sound more like a human. So I have this master prompt that I'm always using to make any text sound more like a human and not like AI. And the key is to use a flesh score of 70 to 80, or sometimes you can just say use sixth grade reading level, use active voice, consider using first person language if it makes sense for your content and your blog. Also so mix up sentence lengths because usually there are the similar structure, similar length. So you want really short ones and some medium ones. And also I want to add some human imperfections and I want to ban some overused AI words along with just formatting the text with bullets, lists and bolding uh, some of the text. So these are my requirements and I have a prompt that I'm always using. And if you are a member of AIMarketingMasters.com, which is my private community, you get access to all of the prompts that I'm using today and also this master humanizing prompt. And this is here. So I can just copy and paste it to Claude. And after this, I'm pretty much done with the AI part and my draft is already looking so good. And so the last step, the most important one where you put actual work in is about enriching the content with actual human elements that build trust and doing something that AI just can't do yet. So some of the ways to enrich content, a good hack is to write the intro and too long didn't read section yourself. So this is the first thing that people see when they land on your blog post. And this adds more trust if it's written by you. Also add images of yourself or your team to make it more personal. For example, you can see in my blog, I'm using my own images. And I'm also creating a lot of screenshots and you can make GIFs as well if you're showing a product. This all makes reading the blog post easier and you can definitely say that, oh, this isn't like a regular AI written blog post. And also you should add some relevant quotes and personal stories, examples from your own experience and some original data. Maybe you've done some surveys, you have collected some data, use that because AI can't do it. If you have something that's not available on the internet yet and definitely visualize it on graphs or do some infographics even. And also a good SEO hack is to rewrite something even small in every fourth sentence. So this should ensure that Google and people reading your blog post can get really good value out of your blog post and it's not detectable as the basic AI content. So now that you know how to fix bad AI content, you should now continue with this video that shows you how to create an automation that creates these really good drafts with just one click. So you don't have to copy and paste these prompts all the time. Hope you liked it. Bye.